welcome, friends. I'm Tom Sinclair, that Vid Blaster guy, coming to you with another episode. Hopefully, it's a good one of that Vid Blaster guy. We've, we're doing things a little differently today. We're going out through YouTube, which I want to apologize to all our friends that tried to watch us uh, live earlier today. And we're in countries that, for some reason, block YouTube or have license problems or whatever, and you didn't get to watch us live. My apologies on that. Uh, that's, that's not a good thing. But the, for those that are watching live, we're delighted to have you here. And our chat is uh, its in the same old place that it's always been. But if you're watching us directly on YouTube and you don't, have act, you don't know where the chat is, the link right here will take you to the chat. It's uh, www.sinclairsportsnetwork.com dot com slash that vid blaster guy underscore chat dot htm and i'll flash that up periodically throughout the show so if you'd, you'd like to come chat with us man we'd love to have you thank you very much and uh somebody was just closing the door to the studio and i appreciate that apparently i'm too loud i'm keeping everybody up the, uh, for those of you that are watching live we have about a 35 second delay between what I think is live and what you see as live. So if you're chatting with me and uh, you know I don't respond right away or, or I appear to be ignoring you, it's because that whatever I said 35 seconds ago, I've already forgotten about now. Uh, no, I'm just teasing. Anyway, the, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. This YouTube thing is, is kind of new, kind of new. But that vid blaster guy, the premise of our show is that one guy with one PC can do a pretty darn good broadcast. Now, I started out saying an awesome broadcast and then apologizing because it wasn't awesome. And I realized the awesomeness is it's not in the technology. It's in the, it's in the individual. And a broadcast is really only as good as the person. You can take bad tools and put them in the hands of a craftsman and he can create a masterpiece. And you can take good, good tools and put them in the hands of a klutz, and you get a block of wood with a bunch of chisel marks on it. <laughs> so I think we've got the best tool in Vid Blaster, but I am not the best craftsman. I'm, I'm working on it. But think what you can do when you've got the right tools, and I think Vid Blaster is, is the right tool to do. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. We do have... Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Some breaking news. Whoops, where did I go? There I am. We have some breaking news, and that is Vid Blaster has finally released the official version 3.14. It's the first of the version 3 releases. We've, we've been spinning around with private betas and public betas and all sorts of betas for, for several weeks, actually a couple of months now. And version 3.14 was proclaimed an official release um, last week. And wouldn't you know it, just as soon as it did, what popped up? A couple of bugs. <laughs> so version 3.15 will be out shortly, we understand, and in it will be at least one of the bug fixes. Um, the bug was a problem with the recorder, and apparently the recorder was not was not recording properly, was not saving in some circumstances. And it had to do, I'm not, I'm not sure I've got the sequence right, but if somebody started the streamer and then started the recorder and then stopped the recorder or some sequence like that, there was a problem with the recorder working properly. That bug has been fixed. 3.15 is kind of still having the dust blown off it. And uh, we hope that will be out shortly and we'll fix that problem. There also has been a bug for some folks um, where the streamer streams for one or two seconds and then stops. And typically that's been, in the past, that's been a symptom that there was some bad information, operator error, I guess is what we'd call it, some bad information that was put into the streamer. Um, if you were trying to stream to one of the CDNs like DeCast or, or uh, Viewstream or something like that, and you didn't put in the correct information. Um, in fact, I found out last night, if you add a space to the end of a, a password or a username or one of the URLs, that will give you the same symptom. It'll stream for one or two seconds and then it'll quit. 
and I was thinking, you know, what am I doing wrong? Of all people in the world, I should know how to do this. And I went back, looked in, and you know how sometimes when you cut and paste, it will pick up that trailing space. And in this case, it had picked up the trailing space, and it had put it, I think, in the username. I was doing, I was u using DeCast's new beta stream that uh, goes to iOS devices, and I was testing that a little bit. And when I when I cut and pasted the uh, the username from the DeCast website to put into the VidBlaster streamer settings under username, I guess, and it, it picked up an extra space, and I was getting that error. Um, so, version 3.15 is uh, is in the wings. We hope that will be coming out soon. Not sure if that's going to going to pick up uh, the the small streamer problem that a very few people are having, where it, it streams for one or two seconds. But if if you find that you're having a uh, a problem with with VidBlaster, if you think you're having some sort of issue, uh, you can go to the forum forum.vidblaster.com. And if you're a licensed user, you can post a bug report in the bug section. And if you're not, if you're just a trial user, and the trial, by the way, is free and unlimited, if you're a trial user, you can uh, put that in the support section that you're having a problem. My guess is most of the time, if you're just learning to use VidBlaster, you probably aren't finding a bug. You're probably just doing something wrong. Um, but if you think you're doing something wrong and you're not sure what it is, pop me an email, tom at that vidblasterguy.com, and I'd be happy to, to give you a little free support there. Uh, if it goes more than a couple of couple of emails, we would have to ask you to do a, um, a, a support package with us, but um, we're happy to help you nonetheless. Um, so coming out 3.15 shortly with the fix to the recorder. Now, I think if, if I understand correctly that there may have been actually two different problems with the recorder. This only fixes one of them, and I'm not sure which of the problems was the more common. Um, but we'll find out, and I, I know we've got a couple of folks watching today that have experienced one or both of those problems, so maybe we can hear back from them as to, uh, as to how things are, are progressing when 3.15 comes out. One thing I did discover recently in the streamer, uh, as I was playing with uh, the new DeCast uh, beta for iOS and also playing with the... Um, the Ustream, because we're doing, uh, not Ustream, excuse me, YouTube, because we're using YouTube for our stream today. As I was entering the codes into Flash Media Live Encoder, I had entered the, uh, the FMS URL and the FMS stream name in the wrong places. I put the URL in the stream location and the stream in the URL location, and what I got was a validator error. And I've had some recent email exchanges with some folks that have had this problem, have had validator errors, and that was actually a, a problem. Um, well, let me let me split this up. There was a problem in the past with Flash Media Live Encoder, which had a little small bug that uh, version two of VidBlaster did not undercover, but version three of VidBlaster did uncover, and that gave you a validator error. But you also can get a validator error if you mismatch your FMS URL and your FMS stream name. Now, if that's just Greek to you, <laughs> but if everything's going fine, don't worry about it. But if you're having a problem with that, uh, just make a note that you want to check and make sure you've got the stream name in the stream name spot and the URL in the URL spot. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. And I did notice when I was setting up for YouTube today that uh, on the YouTube site, it showed the uh, stream name and the uh, URL and the backup URL, but they were actually in a different order on the page than you enter them on the Flash Media Live Encoder page, which for a first-time user, can, well, not a first-time user, it fooled me. I took the top blank in the uh, YouTube uh, code page and I put it in the top blank on the Flash Media Live Encoder page. I didn't pay attention to what the title was. I just assumed they would have it in the right order. Well, they don't. So check your, uh, check your codes, check your, the names of your codes, and make sure you're entering the correct information in the correct place. Otherwise, it will not work, and it will drive you bonkers, drive you bonkers. So a couple of uh, quick tips and tricks right off the bat. Now let's talk about, uh, about YouTube. Uh, YouTube had previously allowed anybody that had a YouTube account and had a thousand subscribers 
to be able to stream live. And then I think it was over the weekend, maybe Monday, Sunday or Monday, they opened it up to anybody with 100 or more subscribers. And I thank you, all of you folks that have subscribed to my channel. I don't know why you would want to do that, but I, I appreciate you doing that. And it got me over the 100 um, signed up, and they approved me for, again, some unknown reason. And uh, it, <laughs> sorry, it, I just I tickle myself sometimes. Um, and they, you know, they said you can go ahead and stream live for free. Now, I don't know if they're putting commercials in the middle like Ustream does or if they had a, uh, a commercial at the beginning. I don't have my YouTube channel set up for commercials at all. Frankly, I think that's an, an annoyance, and I don't have anything that I want to advertise for anybody else, and I don't think the 15 cents or whatever it's going to earn me is going to make a whole lot of difference, even if it, you know, even if I did it for 10 years. So I just as soon go to, go straight to something and watch it without having a bunch of ads. So be interested to hear from folks that are watching today whether you're getting some ads at any point. Um, there are also two ways to watch the feed today. You can watch it through the YouTube channel. And if you're doing that and you want to get into the chat room, I'm going to put the chat URL up there again so you can copy down and, and uh, paste or whatever. I guess you can't cut and paste that one because it's just an image. But uh, we'd love to have you join us in chat. And I also took the embed code from that and was going to embed it in my website so that um, you'd have an opportunity to, to, to be in my website and to watch it live in the website. And when I looked at the embed code for, for Ustream, it was a, um, an iframe. Now, I don't know what an iframe is. I'm not that, that bright. But I do know that the software that I'm using to generate my website code called Joomla uh, does not play nice with iframes. And so you can put an iframe in there and it'll, it'll just flat out disappear. And then apparently there was another embed code that I could use that was something else, and I'm not sure, you know, an I object or something like that. And so I tried that one and that gave me a nice blank frame but no video would play in it. And so Joomla was not playing nicely with either one of those embed codes. So I went back to one of my old websites, uh, the Sinclair Sports Network, uh, which is where we used to do a lot, of, a lot of sports streaming, mostly soccer, and said, well, you know, maybe I can just embed it on a page and then link to it. And I did. And so if you're watching this on the SSN site, you're seeing literally just the feed. There's, there's no graphics. There's no, I mean, other than what YouTube puts down here at the very bottom and across the top um, as a way to help you navigate the player, there's nothing else on that page. So it's, it's interesting. The, um, the folks in the chat room are reporting that the SSN site is slightly ahead. Uh, remember, there's a 30 to 35 second delay. So if you're watching the SSN site, you're getting a 34 second delay. If you're watching YouTube live, you're getting a 35 second delay. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Although it was about 10 seconds earlier today when I was testing them, had them both up at the same time. And I think it, it probably depends on what time you started and uh, what the internet traffic is when you, when you get it going. Um, so it was a little bit of uh, a learning curve in getting the YouTube feed embedded in my website in that I couldn't do it on my regular website. I had to go to a backup in order to do that. But that's, I don't think that's a YouTube problem. I think that's a, a weakness in Joomla. I'm not sure if that's in WordPress. I've, I've been meaning to switch over to that, so I'll be interested to see from any of our WordPress friends. Yeah, I've got a, word, a friend in the chat room right now that's uh, making an offer to help me out. Uh, so, uh, too little too late, at least for today. Um, but I did get the YouTube uh, site up and streaming, and it streamed on SSN, and it streamed on uh, on the YouTube page. I will say that the YouTube, what do they call it? The um, what do they call it? Let me look at it here. It is called the Live Control Room. Um, that's a little funny. If you haven't, it it's kind of reminds me a little bit of the old UStream. Um, 
whatever that streamer page was that they had that would pop up right in the middle and, and give you a bunch of choices. It's like that, but it's uh, a little bit more sophisticated. It actually tests your stream and tells you what's wrong with it, or at least what it thinks is wrong with it. And you, YouTube wants to have, uh, based on your, your resolution, it wants to have a, a minimal um, bit rate. I think f we're doing 864 by 480 today. It wanted to have a minimal bit rate of 500, a middle bit rate of 1,000, and an optimal bit rate of 2,000. Um, and so I selected 1,000 just because that's what we've been streaming at in our regular shows is, is 1,000. And it also uh, provided for a backup channel. So that's interesting. I don't know that that really affects anything, although I guess the backup channel uh, could, be the, could be the one that uh, is, is a second ahead or the sec a second behind. It also was able to tell me that uh, I wasn't using the, the right frame rate. It was able to tell me that I wasn't using the right keyframes, that I wasn't using the right uh, encoding settings in Flash Media Live Encoder. And so the basic, if you're going to try this, the, the basic settings in YouTube, excuse me, the basic settings in Flash Media Live Encoder on the video side um, will have to be adjusted. You'll have to adjust the, uh, uh, from, um, excuse me, from baseline to main, and then from 3.1 to 4.1, and then your keyframes will have to go down to, to 2 or 1. I tried two, and, and even though it says it should work, it didn't work, and I had to go down to one keyframe per second. So, you know, that, that does affect the frame rate ever so slightly. Instead of 30 frames a second, you get 29 frames a second, but most anybody won't notice. Um, other than that, it seemed to work okay. Uh, it allowed me to, to set up a time where it would start live, and for those of you guys that were here before uh, before 1.30 uh, Central, before 2.30 Eastern, it, uh, it flashed a countdown timer on the screen, and then when it came time for the stream, it sort of said, you know, stand by, we're, we're going to go out and find the stream somewhere. And that took about, I guess, about a minute for it to finally come live. I'm not sure if, if you refreshed your browser at that point, if that would have helped or not. But uh, it, was, it was quite an interesting experience. Um, I was hoping to actually dual broadcast DeCast and YouTube today. Um, but I found out later that YouTube has um, apparently blocked some, some countries in Europe. Germany, our German friends are not able to watch today. Uh, they were in the chat room earlier and said, oh, we can't see anything, can't hear anything. So my apologies, I didn't realize that was the case. And I also had intended uh, I mean, since I intended to do both, I didn't consider that YouTube would have a problem. And if it did, then the DeCast page would be the, sort of the drop back, the, the default or fallback. But uh, as I mentioned to folks in pre-show, um, when I showed up off of vacation, uh, DeCast had changed the way they were doing. And the uh, embed codes that I have on my website um, are not the embed codes that my stream sends to anymore. Um, so I was, I was kind of doing a, a quick chat with them to, in hopes to get it, get it straightened out, but uh, was not, to get it, not able to get it straightened out. And so fortunately had the YouTube site up and ready to go and tested. And, uh, you know, there's a lesson in all that for those of you that uh, are just starting out. And for those of you like me that have been doing this for a while, uh, you really do want to have your, your ducks in a row and have done some good testing. Um, even if everything worked perfectly the last time. I can't tell you how many times I've dealt with folks, including me, this is not just the first time, but, but on more than one occasions, where everything worked great the last time I tried it. And a day later, or a week later, or in this case two weeks later, suddenly I can't stream to the cast. Actually, I could stream to the cast, but the website where I had embedded the player, it wasn't picking it up. It wasn't working for some reason. So um, test, do a test, and you know, people used to kid me when I did soccer that I would arrive, try to arrive at the soccer venue at, at 3.30 for a, for a 5.30 game. Say, you know, why do you, need, why do you need two hours to set up a couple of cameras and a computer? Well, you need two hours because 
an hour maybe spent troubleshooting. And um, if, you, if not, then you've got an hour to kill. But it, take, it took me about an hour to, to set up, and then inevitably, you know, so I, I'd say one out of every three broadcasts, we would have some sort of problem. Back then we were streaming with Ustream, and uh, sometimes we would have problems with that. Sometimes we'd have problems with the AT&T DSL line, which was a blazing one meg down, 0.3 megs up. Um, back those were the good old days where you really had to be conservative with what you did in terms of frame rates and, and resolutions and everything else. But um, I'm not sure how I got on that subject. But the idea is to go ahead and test every day, every time. Before you start, go ahead and test and make sure everything works right and then give yourself some time to troubleshoot it because there will be that one time when it doesn't. And I suspect if we were to go behind the scenes at the major networks, um, at, at the cable companies, uh, you know, whether it's ABC or CBS or Fox or USA or anything that has any kind of live element to it, um, that they have problems behind the scenes and that they've done that enough times where they have fallback positions and their fallback positions probably have fallback positions where their backups have backups. Um, so make sure you've got a backup plan um, before you start your broadcast and make sure you test your primary plan. Okay, let's see. Uh, we've got somebody in the chat room who is having trouble finding this show, so let me post a quick link to that right now if I can and see if we can't get them back in the... Let's see. Let's get that one. Hang on with me just a second. I appreciate your patience on this. And how about right here? Try that one. Okay. All right. I'm hoping, let me test that one real quick, make sure that's going to work. And that looks like me, so we'll do that. Okay, sorry about that. Somebody in the chat room was having trouble finding, and uh, we don't want to leave them out in the cold, as it were, or in the dark, as the case may be. Um, Let's shift, uh, shift gears for just a second. And I am, as you recall, the last couple of shows, I was testing out a six-port standard definition capture card that retails for about $415. It's from a company called V-Prime uh, out in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, I believe, on the West Coast. But we won't hold that against them. And uh, if you're interested in that card, you can go to my website. There'll be a link in the, in the uh, archives, I think, or if you're watching this on YouTube, if you go to one of our, our shows in July, there's a link in the comments um, where you can go directly to that card and purchase it. I, I recommend it. I've, I've owned a couple of them and actually sold them to people who couldn't wait for them. And so I've got some more on order just to keep in my own stock. But um, it's, a, it's a good card. It uses a uh, RCA connectors for audio and then a BNC connector for video, which means you need to get some of those BNC to RCA adapters. But those are pretty cheap. You can get them off of eBay. But may, remember to give yourself a week or 10 days to get those in. You don't want to be up against the gun on that one. Um, but the card that I'm, I'm using today is from V Prime. It's the VCC204XE. And, um, you know, I should have been better prepared for this, but let's see if I can do a quick screen capture and show you what it is that this card looks like, or at least part of it. And let's see if that's going to come out. There we go. Let me get that lower third out of the way. And that is the V-Prime. High speed, all in one, HD capture. Well, don't let the title fool you because not only is it HD capture, but it is four ports of standard definition capture and two ports of high definition capture. Now, the, uh, the, the connector here at the top is a VGA like connector, and that's where a dongle that connects the uh, standard definition, and so it's four. Again, you know, those BNC, those yellow BNC connectors, and then two pair of audio connectors. So you've got four audio ends 
and four standard definition video ends. And then this connector right here, which is a, a modified DVI connector, has a pigtail that attaches to it that splits into uh, a pigtail that splits into two, and then each one of those two has a pigtail that attaches to it that allows you to pick up either HDMI or component and audio. Um, so you end up with a big old wad of cables for sure, but for $1,085, you've got four ports of standard definition and two ports of high definition. Now compare this, for example, to the good old standby, the Osprey 460E, which retails for about $1,100, which is four ports of standard definition capture um, and audio in. And here, it's kind of like buying one of those and getting two HD captures for free. So I think that's a pretty good deal. I, um, I'm testing it right now. I've got, uh, I, I actually had five cameras set up on it earlier, had uh, three standard definitions and two high definition cameras, but I didn't have enough CPU headroom <laughs> to run all that at the same time on this little old PC. So I kept the, uh, the standard definition cams up. And uh, of course, remember, I'm, I'm streaming and recording all on the same PC. So that's, that's, that's one shot. There's a shot over my shoulder. And I promise, even though this looks like a second PC, I'm not really using it in the broadcast. I'm just using it to monitor the broadcast. So I haven't broken my mantra yet. Uh, but you can see here that I've got VidBlaster here with some extra desktop space. And then I've actually extended VidBlaster over onto this second monitor, and you can see Flash Media Live Encoder peeking out from underneath that. And then uh, I've got the V Prime page over here on the right monitor with the chat page kind of slipped in right behind it so that I can monitor the chat at the same time. And then down here at the very bottom is the uh, Windows Task Manager so I can keep an eye on my CPU usage. Right now, it's, it's very fluctuating between 60 and 65%, which is, is, is probably pretty good. You really don't want to go over 70 or 80, or you're going to find that you've got some, some issues that pop in just because cores will occasionally max out, and they may not show it on the, on the graph, but we know that happens. Um, so the, the V Prime capture card, four ports of standard definition. You can see uh, I've got the three cameras of standard definition over here. And then this is the, uh, the, the capture, the video capture of that website. And then this is, the, this is the, what I really look like in real life when I'm not uh, got a fancy background behind me. And, and again, uh, hat tip to uh, Martin K for doing this for me. I really appreciate that. It's, it's really nice. Uh, and I see Martin has just joined us in the chat room. So what good timing to have given him some kudos there. But the card uh, appears to do a really good job. Um, the, when I had the, the, HDF, the HD cams and the HD captures uh, connected and working, one of the cameras was uh, component, one was, was uh, HDMI, they added about 10% each to the CPU usage at 720. When I initially tried it at 1080, uh, they were adding about 15% to the total CPU usage each at that, and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do that and record and stream all at the same time, because if I added another 30% right now, I'd be 90 to 95%, and I don't want to go that high. Although I've been itching to... Uh, since I got this new motherboard back to overclock this guy again. I uh, don't think that damaged the motherboard before, although you never know. Um, but I'd like to give that another shot and see if I can't squeeze out a little bit more on this one man, one PC. Uh, so one, one of the things that, uh, that I've been discussing with some people is the idea of using a second PC. I gotta admit, I'm considering it. Um, or a, some sort of uh, dedicated box that's essentially a PC as a separate encoder. And because encoding right now, let me look at my usage and see, encoding right now is taking, well, it says, it says 
Um, but I've seen it as high as 30% in some situations where Flash Media Live Encoder was, was just really eating it up. Um, and if I can offload that to a separate PC, and the other option too is to offload the, uh, the recording to another PC. And so those are ways that, that you can do that. But I really don't want to go into that a whole lot because that's not the premise of this show. The premise of this show is that one guy with one PC can really do it, that you can take your PC out to a ball game and stream a ball game. You can take it to a church service and do a church service or a community event or, a, or you know, just about anything you can think of where you can get electricity and an Internet connection. Um, you, can, you can stream it. And uh, that's where the real value is, and I think that's where the... the, the the, the mass appeal will be. Um, yes, you can stream from your phone, you can stream from all sorts of other devices, um, but if you want to do multicam, um, which is, you know, sports and other activities and church services, and, uh, and occasionally, uh, occasionally talk shows have a good, good reason to do a, a multicam as well. But if you want to do multicam, you're going to need to have something like, like Vidblaster. Um, and I see all sorts of chat in the chat room about, about that, too. So that's the, that's the Magewell card. Uh, I don't have a link on that. I'll try to get one and put that in the show notes at uh, thatvidblasterguide.com in the archive section where you can watch this uh, page as many times as you want to in the future. The card retails for ten eighty five. dollars um, if I find any deals on it, I will make sure and let you know because, uh, well, that's, that's a lot of money, but for what you're getting, it's not a lot of money. Um, it's as if you bought a, uh, an Osprey 460E and two uh, Intensity Pro cards for $200 a piece, so you're in the $1,400, $1,500 range, and you used up three slots, and then you used up three nights trying to get those darned Intensity Pro cards set up with your cameras and anything else. Uh, this one was virtually, I mean, almost perfectly plug and play, and I'm sure there were some tweaks that I could have done to it that would have made things even better. But I'm, I'm delighted with it, and, uh, and I may keep it. Yeah, the folks at V-Prime lent this one to me. Um, but they may not be getting it back. We'll just have to see. The uh, want to switch switch gears again and talk a little bit about um, and this is sort of housekeeping. So if you don't like housekeeping stuff, you can you can tune out or go grab a sandwich or can consider this a commercial or something like that. For folks that are um, pondering or struggling with upgrading to version three, let's talk a little bit about that. First, if you have a version 2 license and it's less than a year old, you can upgrade to version 3 for free. Nada. Nothing. Won't cost you a penny. Um, you just go to, uh, what do you go to? You go to help, go to registration, um, enter, well I guess I don't have an option to go to version 3 because I'm already on version 3. Uh, but there should, should be uh, a uh, free upgrade button and you can press that and follow the directions on how to do that and that will get you up to version 3 for free. Um, people have asked me, well what if I don't like version 3 because I hear, you know, Tom you said that the recorder doesn't have full function yet and it's got a bug in it you talked about today and the playlist is missing. I use the playlist all the time. Well if, if you want to pop up to version 3 and take a look at it and then revert back to version 2 you can do that, no penalty, no foul. Um, just make sure that you've kept your, definitely you want to keep your, your version 2 product key, that's the key that you got originally when you, when you bought the license. And you also want to lay your hands on the activation key, which is the key that VidBlaster sent you when you activated your product. So there are two long keys. Uh, one is the product key that gives you the right to have the program uh, activated. And the second is the activation key that is specific to that PC. That activation key, if you don't like version 3, you can simply revert back to version 2. Uh, you'll have to download it or, or go find it on your hard drive and install version 2 and then use that activation key to activate it again. If you, um, if you 
have a version one license. And there are a lot of folks out there that loved version one. Oh boy, version 1.36 was absolutely sweet. That was one of my favorite versions. And there are a lot of folks that, that still are, are using that. If you wanna try version three, make sure you've got your version one product key and your version one activation key. Because once you get up there, um, well, actually, you won't be able to get up for free because your, your license is more than a year old. Um, so if you can test it, but it'll, I think it'll revert to the trial version. And then if you go back to version one, you'll have to re-enter your activation key. If you have version two that's more than a year old, you're in the same boat. Now, if, you wanna, if, if you've tested it and you want to upgrade, it will cost you about 50% of your original investment to upgrade. So if you bought the 195 home package, it'll cost you 97 or whatever the math is on that one. If you bought the 495 Pro package, it'll cost you, you know, 247 or whatever it is to upgrade. Um, that's a good time if you're thinking about upgrading from one version to another. That's also a good time to, to think about upgrading from one edition to another. Because if you're a, a, a Pro user, for example, and it's going to cost you $247.50 to upgrade from version 1 or 2 to version 3. For another $247.50, you can upgrade to the studio version and get version 3 thrown in for free. So now, that's, excuse me, that's studio edition. I get edition and version. I use them in interchangeably, and I shouldn't. But um, that's one thought. If, if, if you've always wanted to upgrade to the next higher edition, when you upgrade versions is a good chance to do that because you've already got half of it paid for, um, or at least you've already planning on spending half of it. So that's a strategy to, to get uh, a little bit more out of your money when you're upgrading. If you need some help upgrading or if you want to upgrade, I'd be happy to do that, help you with that. It is a manual process, takes uh, 36 to 48 hours to accomplish, sometimes a little longer than that over the weekend um, because it's handled by hand in Holland, um, complete with wooden shoes and all. Um, I don't know, maybe they have wooden file cabinets. Not sure. So if you have questions, if you're, having, if you're struggling with downgrading or upgrading, uh, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to give you a hand on that and, and get you through that process. It's typically, it's, you know, it's just one of those things where it's probably just you know, a little period or a little dot or something like that. That's, uh, that's giving you a problem, and we can get you right back on the right track for sure. Tom at thatvidblasterguy.com to help with upgrades. What is coming down the pike for VidBlaster? Let's talk about that a little bit. There was, a, and boy, this should have been in the breaking news segment. Let's see. We can probably still make it breaking news. How about that? There we go. Um, there was a one single little tweet that popped out of VidBlaster headquarters in, uh, in, in, Scot in, I was gonna say Scotland, in, in Holland, about, uh, about seven or eight days ago, where uh, somebody was asking about 3D. Now, I know a lot of people out there have 3D TV sets and don't even use the 3D, but there have, has been a little bit of interest in perhaps adapting VidBlaster to work for 3D. So remember, you heard it here first, unless, of course, you saw that tweet. But uh, keep an eye out for that one. That may be coming down the pike. Now, for those of us that uh, are, are wedded to the recorder and want it to have all its functions and love the playlist and want a new playout module, in version three, we, we hope and pray and assume that all that will be squared away. But it's always nice to have something exciting uh, kind of to, to keep us uh, interested, something on the, on the horizon that we can look forward to. That would be version uh, four, perhaps. Oh, actually, that would have been a great one for version three, wouldn't it, though? Three, 3D. Well, maybe it'll be 4D, and it'll have smell-o-vision or whatever that was that, that never really worked. Um, so that could be coming down the pike at some point in the future. I, I would not make plans on that one, uh, but uh, there, are four, there are 3D cameras out there that, that record in 3D, and I'm sure they, 
Oh, I don't know. I was going to say I'm sure they can stream it in 3D, but I don't know how that works. So, uh, but maybe you just set up two cameras side by side and they have to have a certain uh, distance apart, distance together, and you get two different feeds and you overlap them and suddenly you've got, uh, you got uh, 3D. Another thing that I would love to see come to, down the pike, and there's been a lot of discussion in the forum about it, although there hasn't been any movement that I've seen as of yet, is uh, animated transitions. And by, I, I don't mean transitions in the scent, but I mean animated like this, this uh, uh, lower third right here would be animated and would float and would fade and do all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, so we're, we're hoping that those kinds of things come down the pike too. You just never know, never know. Let's see, where are we gonna go with this at this point? I think I've about gone through all my show notes and we've got a little time left. Let me see if there's some questions in the chat room that have popped up. There's always a, a, a great conversation going on in the chat room. If, if you haven't been in the chat room lately, you need to try it out. Let's see, oh man, I'll look at all these people in the chat room. I hope they're behaving. Uh, we've got that guy from New York up there, you never know. All right, let's see. Checking right here. Somebody's volunteering to help me figure out something on my website. Boy, that's for sure I'm needing it. And somebody else was getting the please stand by. Not sure, that's, that's not good news. Okay. Well, for those of you that are having trouble, my apologies. That's that's not good. If you're watching us um, on YouTube right now, I mean, the everybody's watching on YouTube. But if you're watching on the actual YouTube site, you're not seeing the quality that we're streaming in. If you will go down to the little um, icon right here somewhere, the little um, the little gear cog, and and press that, it'll pop up a little um, window, and I think 360 will be selected as the current uh, resolution. If you will bump that up to 480, you will get what we are actually streaming. Now, if you're on the, the uh, Sinclair Sports Network link, that is, uh, for some reason, popped straight through at 480 um, without need to adjustment. But on the, the YouTube site, the default is 360. So if you'll pop that up to 480, it'll give you a little, little, clearer, little clearer picture, a little better resolution. Um, and you also have the choices of sort of a middle size player or a full screen player in addition to the small player that comes up naturally. Um, trying to think what else we can talk about here. PA is asking in the chat room, what is the delay on YouTube with VidBlaster? Um, VidBlaster shouldn't introduce any delay at all. The delay is going to obviously be in the the uh, internet connection, which is going who knows where. With the cast, I could pick out what servers I wanted to use, and I pick out Washington, D.C., because that's physically the closest. And generally, we have a pretty good connection between uh, the Gulf Coast of Alabama and Washington, D.C. on the East Coast. But here with YouTube, I'm not exactly sure where we're sending this stream. So it's going there, which could be Los Angeles, or it could be you know Chicago, or somewhere in the Midwest. And then from there, it's going to you. And it's, I suspect it's being encoded again. Well, I know it's being encoded again because you've got two or three choices in, um, in the resolutions. What do we got? We got 480, we got 360, and we got 240. And the automatic setting appears to be 360. So YouTube has taken my 480 stream and they are chopping it up and re-encoding it at a lesser resolution. I suspect the frame rate is the same. The, uh, the requested resolution, the, the best resolution that they had was, was uh, 864 by 480, which is what we're streaming today, 30 frames a second. Um, they will take for that 
resolution anywhere from 500 to 2,000 uh, K BPS, and we're streaming at 1,000. So it's you know kind of right in the middle, and that's what we normally stream the video at anyway, is a thousand, thousand on video and one twenty eight on audio. So this should look about the same as as our show normally does. Um, the one thing that it's got that I really like, and I alluded to earlier, is the DVR function. So you if 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 I said something and you didn't quite catch it, you can actually back up. Whoops, excuse me, other way, back up and catch it and then watch the rest of the stream on out which of course if you're in the chat room it, it blows the chat room to uh, to bits because you really don't know if you're in sync or how close to in sync you are with anybody else but it's yeah, it's interesting youtube is 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 moving forward they're, they're trying some different things trying to add some excitement and some interest and trying to grab some of that live streaming market from Ustream and and some of the others excuse me Ugh, you guys are keeping me up. Sorry. No, I'm teasing. I've been on vacation for a week, so it's it's tough to get up on like a regular person and, and go to work every day. The um, I, I think this has promise. I doubt if I will use this regularly because the delay to live is more than I like. I mean, I'm I'm watching the chat room right now, and I, I love being involved with the chat room, but the 35 second delay. Kind of, it's kind of like dealing with an old person, um, and I'm old, so I can say that. And 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 some of my friends are old, and it's you know the conversation goes like this: Hey, did you see the weather today? What? Did you see the weather today? What, what? 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 And then you know eventually you get the conversation out, but a five second conversation takes thirty seconds to do, and that's kind of uh, kind of the way it is here. Uh, Here's a question in the, in the chat room. Um, oh, they're asking, how does one qualify for a YouTube live channel? You have to have at least 100 subscribers on YouTube, and then you can you can uh, look on your uh, what is it called your your video manager page, and there should be an option for live events over there, and you can sign up under that. Um, and if you don't have uh, if you don't have 100 subscribers. Um, pop your your YouTube uh, channel in the in the chat room and, and I'll subscribe I bet some of the other guys would too um, oh here's a question just for the chat oh I think that's great um, if you were going to use a second computer to either stream or record what would be the best method to send the SD video out of the main computer ah well that's interesting um, if I were to use it to stream or record, I would use it to. I would use it to stream. I would use it to encode, and I would take the video out probably through one of the dreaded um, Blackmagic Intensity Pro cards. Yep, that's how I would do it, and send it into a second PC that had a Blackmagic Intensity Pro card. You got to be careful with those cards because setting up the the frame rate and the and the resolution, apparently they don't negotiate well on their own. They have to be told exactly what to do. It's kind of like dealing with, uh, kind of like dealing with me. <laughs> if you give me leeway, I, I go off and do who knows what. I don't negotiate well, but you have to tell me exactly what you want me to do, and I can do that. And that's what those black magic cards need. Yep. And uh, let's see what else. Okay, so some folks have been putting their their YouTube channel in the chat and let's uh, before we forget about it let's subscribe and there we go all right very good so we got one down um and there's there's some folks uh andrew seabrook uh down in melbourne who i don't happen to see in the chat today but generally watches us on his way to work on Thursday mornings, because it's Thursday morning there when it's Wednesday afternoon here and Wednesday evening in London. But um, Andrew has a card that does encoding uh, by Avermedia. I'm not sure if that's available in the States, but that's on my list of things to check out that I think could have some promise to maintain that one man, one PC integrity. 
and still, but kind of offload the encoding process onto a dedicated card for that. Um, so let's see. And we've got somebody else here in the, in the chat that is asking for a subscription. So let's do that and help them get up to their 100. And somebody else is asking for that, so we'll subscribe to that. Hey, this is good. There's kind of a little community deal thing going here. And Yellow Jacket, I think I've already subscribed to Yellow Jacket. Yeah, I did. All right. And then uh, there we go. So we're all up to date on those. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So if you're interested, go to YouTube and find out about it. If you don't have 100 subscribers, yeah, then maybe it's a little premature for you anyway. But if you've got a bunch of subscribers and, or if you've been doing a bunch of video anyway, um, it, it could be a good way. And the, the question, and I'll be interested to find out, is how many, you know, let's talk about broadcasting for just a minute and audiences. Sometimes your audience finds you because they're interested in your subject and they Google your subject and you pop up because you have a web presence. And that's how I think a lot of you have found me over the, the last year. And by the way, we just celebrated our one year anniversary last month. Woo! And, and on for a great second year so far. And, and other people, and we started out um, doing our soccer broadcast on Ustream and we pick up what I call drive-bys. You know, people that are just sort of, you know, they're, it's, it's like channel surfing on the TV, but they're doing it on Ustream. And so if you're on a place like Ustream that gets a lot of traffic, you can pick up some drive-bys, and hopefully if you've got a good show, you can convert them into regular, regular viewers. I, I suspect YouTube may offer something similar to that, but I'm not sure how many folks um, were able to see today that this show was on. If they were on YouTube looking for something, was, was there a way that this live show popped up as uh, an offering for them to select them on? Um, don't know. I'd be interested if anybody's watching today that's not a regular viewer that just discovered us because we were live on YouTube today. I would, I would definitely love it immensely, 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 if you would drop me a line and let me know that that was the case. And, and that'll, you know, help me decide whether this is a medium that we want to continue to use here for that Vid Blaster guy. And it's also something that I can share with you guys, the folks that are watching, as to whether this is something that, uh, you know, that might work for you. Um, just because something doesn't work for me doesn't mean it's not going to work for you. But if, you know, we have similar uh, similar values, similar shows, similar themes. Um, what doesn't work for me probably won't work for you either. Um, anyway, so let's see. That's about it. That's about it. What are we going to do in the future? In the future, coming up with uh, that Vid Blaster guy, I'm hoping in the next several weeks to have a bunch of uh, exciting guests that will include uh, Alan Bunt, you may remember Alan was the uh, actually the guest on our very first was it our very first show. No, I think it was our very second show. Amnon Nissan was was our guest on our first show, but Alan has been working furiously up in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. On uh, he's upgraded to version three and upgraded to studio, and he has the ability to use macros now, and he's really excited about that. And, he, and so he's basically automating as much as he can automate under one button um, because he, not, during the church service, not only does he, uh, does he operate the switcher, does he operate VidBlaster, but he also plays the organ. Uh, so, wow, you know, this guy is doing big-time double duty. Now, don't be too impressed because most of the organ stuff is recorded. He's not actually playing it. I think he's just initiating the recording. Uh, but nevertheless, he's still got his, got his hands full, and he has had... You know, basically a whole nother year's worth of experience with VidBlaster. He had some great uh, point and tilt and zoom cameras, some Sonys that he shared with us last time and showed us his setup. So hopefully he will come back and show us uh, all the improvements and changes that have been made to that since then. Uh, I see my friend Jim Moline in the chat room, and we did a great, uh, great uh, church show a while back too where he did a super 
uh, church studio tour, and I'm hoping we can come back and repeat that and uh, see some other friends in the chat room that I can't wait to ask to come back on the show as well, but I'm not going to embarrass them uh, because they may want to say, your show again? Are you kidding? God, I was glad to get through it the first time. <laughs> anyway, and, and there's some folks out there that have just picked up VidBlaster recently um, that uh, I've invited to come on because they're doing cool things. And it's not necessarily, I mean, the, the common denominator is, yes, everybody's using VidBlaster, and of course, and this is a VidBlaster show. But when people are doing cool things with, with video, with streaming and recording and, and all this crazy stuff that we do, it, uh, it, it makes me, it expands my mind. It, it helps me become more creative because if, if person is doing something that I've not seen before, even though I may not want to copy them, I may want to pull an element of what they're doing out and use that somewhere else to strengthen or improve uh, something else that I'm doing. Um, for example, I was talking with a, a gentleman uh, two weeks ago before I went on vacation that works for a county government in the Midwest of the United States. And they were using VidBlaster. And they were using it to stream the county government board meetings live and to record them and post them on their internet, uh, on, the, on their website for people to view later on the internet. And we were chatting about different things. And, and I was really impressed with what he was doing because he had really simplified it. He'd really dumbed it down where he could go in and do it and, you know, he could, you know, basically leave it unmanned um, and then come back to it when he needed to change a camera shot and he was going to go wild and start putting some lower thirds in. Uh, he was really excited about that. But the recording that they made, they by law, they were not allowed to modify. They couldn't do any post-production of this recording. They had to upload it directly as was because if it was modified, who knows what would be taken out? You remember Rich, Richard Nixon and the missing, you know, what was it, missing 12 minutes on the tape or something like that? So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to having him to clear all the legal hurdles to get on the show and talk about what they're doing there. And, uh, you know, you never know. That might give somebody the idea of a way to go out and serve their community or make a few bucks or both. Um, we've got folks in the chat room saying that the local cable communities do that, and I, I think that's the case. Um, but that's only good for the locale. You know, if you're out of town and you want to see what's going on in, uh, in Gainesville, Florida, you can tune in. Uh, you can't tune into TV. It'll have to be on the Internet. Um, yep, it is a matter of public record. Well, folks, I think that brings us uh, to the end of the show. I really appreciate uh, those of you guys that uh, came with us early in pre-show and helped me get through my my struggles to get this up off the ground and and for those of you that are watching live i welcome you to join us for a little pre-show excuse me a little post-show after show party we're going to have hats and streamers it's going to be a great time uh if you're watching us on youtube then uh, you know come watch us live sometime you're, you're more than welcome we're live every wednesday afternoon eastern time three o'clock every wednesday evening uh, 8 o'clock in London, and every Thursday morning, I think it's 5 a.m. in Melbourne, but you'll probably want to check me on that one, and uh, you'll have to make your adjustments for your own time zone. I'm Tom Sinclair, that VidBlaster guy. It's been a treat to be with you today. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming, and uh, I'm going to cut away to our VidBlaster guy uh, logo and a little theme. Sh ugh, I'll get tongue-tied here at the very end, and a little theme music to carry us out. Thanks. Have a great week.